Singapore is a tiny island nation located in Southeast Asia, with a population of only 5.5 million people. So how did Singapore grow from a sleepy fishing village into a mega city and become one of the wealthiest countries in the world? It has limited natural resources and limited space. Singapore's success can be attributed to several factors, including its visionary leadership, hard-working and multicultural population, and strategic location on the trade route between the East and West. Singapore is ranked above the United States, the United Kingdom, and Japan on the United Nations Human Development Index, HDI. The HDI is a measure of a country's development that takes into account indicators such as life expectancy, education, and income. The earliest reference to Singapore and the Malay Peninsula comes from the Indian epic, the Ramayana. The epic mentions Suvarnabhumi, land of gold, and Suvarnadvipa meaning the golden island. The earliest known human settlement in Singapore dates back to the 3rd century AD, when the island was known as Temasek. The city-state was a small fishing village that was ruled by a local ruler. However, even then it was still an important trading post that was frequented by Chinese, Indian, and Arab merchants. The origin of Singapore's name is not entirely clear. One theory is that the name Singapore comes from Malay words derived from Sanskrit. Simha meaning lion and Pura meaning city. According to legend, a prince from Palembang named Sang Nila Utama was said to have seen a lion on the island when he landed there in the 13th century. He took this as a good omen and decided to name the island Singapura. In the 16th century, Singapore became part of the Johor Sultanate, which was centered in present-day Malaysia. The Sultanate used Singapore as a trading post, and the island's population grew rapidly as a result. Sir Stamford Raffles, a British East India Company official, was appointed as the Lieutenant Governor of the British Colony of Benkulan in Sumatra in 1818. He was tasked with finding a new location to establish a British trading post to compete with the Dutch and secure British interests in Southeast Asia. Recognizing the strategic importance of Singapore, which was located at the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula and had a natural harbour capable of accommodating large ships, Raffles proposed it as an ideal site for a new trading post. Singapore was strategically located midway on the maritime trade route between India and China, making it a potential major trading centre. Raffles negotiated with the Sultan of Johor, who was the local ruler of the area that included Singapore. He convinced him to allow the British East India Company to establish a trading post on the island of Singapore in exchange for British protection against rival powers. In January 1819, Raffles arrived in Singapore and began planning the settlement. He laid out the street grid, established a free port, and issued proclamations to attract traders and immigrants from all over Asia and Europe. He also began developing infrastructure such as roads, bridges, and warehouses to support trade. To encourage migrants from neighboring regions to settle in Singapore, Raffles offered them land and tax incentives. He also established policies to promote racial and religious tolerance, which attracted people of different backgrounds and beliefs to the settlement. Under Raffles' leadership, Singapore rapidly grew in population and prosperity, becoming a major commercial hub and the most important British colony in Southeast Asia. In December 1941, Japanese forces began their invasion of Malaya, now Malaysia, and quickly defeated British and Allied forces. The Japanese then set their sights on Singapore, which was a crucial British military base in Southeast Asia. Despite being heavily fortified, the British were unprepared for the speed and ferocity of the Japanese attack. On February 15, 1942, General Arthur Percival, the British commander of the Allied forces, surrendered to the Japanese. 
The fall of Singapore led to the capture of more than 80,000 British, Indian, and Australian troops. The Japanese occupation of Singapore was marked by brutality and repression. The local population suffered greatly, with many subjected to forced labor, torture, and execution. The occupying forces also implemented a policy of suk ching, or purge through purification, in which thousands of Chinese men were rounded up and killed as part of a campaign to eliminate anti-Japanese sentiment. The end of World War II in 1945 saw the return of the British to Singapore, but the experience of the war had a profound impact on the island nation. After the war, Singapore struggled with high unemployment, widespread poverty, and political instability. It was during this period that Lee Kuan Yew, a lawyer and politician, emerged as a leader and champion of Singapore's independence. In 1954, Lee founded the People's Action Party, PAP, and led it to victory in the 1959 general election. In 1965, Singapore gained independence from Malaysia and became a fully independent nation. This was a turning point for the city-state, as it was able to pursue its own economic and political policies without interference from other countries. As Singapore's first prime minister, Lee pursued policies aimed at modernizing Singapore's economy and infrastructure, as well as promoting social cohesion and racial harmony. One of Lee's key accomplishments was his role in transforming Singapore into a major financial and commercial center through the development of a free market economy, which was supported by an array of economic policies such as the promotion of foreign investment, the establishment of export-oriented industries, and the development of a skilled workforce. These policies drove Singapore's economy to become one of the most prosperous in the world, characterized by innovation and entrepreneurship. Lee also implemented policies aimed at reducing income inequality and improving access to healthcare, education, and public housing. Lee also recognized the importance of fostering social cohesion and national unity in a country with a diverse population comprising Chinese, Malay, Indian, and other ethnic groups. He promoted a sense of belonging among all Singaporeans through a range of policies and initiatives, including the promotion of bilingualism, the development of a shared national culture, and the introduction of national service for all Singaporean men. Lee Kuan Yew also made it a priority to keep Singapore clean and orderly. He established strict laws and regulations that encouraged cleanliness, orderliness, and discipline, which helped to create a safe and attractive environment for residents and visitors alike. In the decades that followed, Singapore continued to develop its economy and infrastructure. It became a world leader in areas such as finance, technology, and healthcare. Today, Singapore is a modern and prosperous country with a high standard of living and a diverse population. However, Singapore still faces challenges. The country is small, densely populated, and has limited natural resources. It is also vulnerable to external economic shocks and geopolitical tensions. Despite these challenges, Singapore remains a model for economic development and social cohesion. Its history is a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of its people, and it serves as a reminder of the importance of investing in education, infrastructure, and innovation. We hope you found this video informative and educational. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching.